Hi, this is Zach with Stackhawk, and I'd like to show you a simple new way to integrate Dynamic Application Security Testing, or DAST, into your GitHub repository with Hawkscan. To demonstrate, I've set up a simple application repository using a test application called Vulnode Express, an intentionally vulnerable web app. From your repository, in the GitHub console, click into the Security tab, from here, you can enable several security features for your repository, such as Dependabot for software composition analysis or CodeQL for static analysis of your code. And now you can also set up dynamic application and API security testing with Stackhawk. Rather than searching your dependencies or analyzing your source code, Stackhawk directly tests your running application for security issues and helps you and your team track and resolve them. To begin, click into Code Scanning Alerts and select Stackhawk from the list of security analysis tools from the marketplace. This creates a starter workflow that will run in GitHub Actions every time you check in code. Next, edit the Start Your Service step to start your own service so it's available to be scanned by Stackhawk in the workflow. In my case, I have a Docker Compose configuration to start my app along with its own test database. I use the detach flag to make sure it's running in the background so this workflow can move on to the next step, which is to scan the app with Hawkscan. Finally, take note that the Run Hawkscan step I've selected here expects to find your Stackhawk API key in a GitHub secret named Hawk API key. This allows Hawkscan to save scan results to the Stackhawk platform for analysis, alerting, and triage. If you want Hawkscan to break your build on scan errors, such as when the scanner finds issues that exceed your severity threshold, you can remove this continue on error setting. I'm going to leave mine as it is because I want to set a failure threshold. I also want to allow my workflow to succeed no matter what Hawkscan finds. Now, I'll check this file in. and go set up my Stackhawk configuration. If you don't already have a Stackhawk account, it's easy to set one up. I'll create a new one using my Google credentials as an example. When you first log in, Stackhawk will help you create your first API key, application, and configuration file. I'll save my API key as a secret named Hawk API key so that my new GitHub Actions workflow can find it. I'll head over to the Settings tab and find Secrets. And I'll add my new repository secret. I'll call it Hawk API key and paste my value in. Now I'll finish my getting started workflow. Call my application Vuln Node Express. I'll select development as my initial environment. And I know that my service is going to come up on the localhost address on port 3000 in my GitHub Actions pipeline. And finally, I've got a, an application ID and I can download my new Stackhawk configuration. So I'm just going to take this configuration and paste it into a new file at the root of my repository, which is where Hawkscan expects to find it by default. and it expects to find it in a file called stackhawk.yaml. I'll paste that in. And I want to add one more section. In the Hawk section, I'm going to add a component called failure threshold. 
and I'm going to set my failure threshold to high so that if Hawkscan finds any high severity alerts, it will break the build. The scanner will re return an error code and that will indicate to GitHub Actions that I've got an error and that I should log a security bug in the code scanning alerts. So I'll check this in. And now GitHub Actions should be running this workflow and scanning my application. Let's check in on it. There it is. Setting up the job. And I'll walk through the steps of checking out the code, building and starting my service. And then scan my service with Hawkscan. And now that my scan is complete, I see that there's a badge on the security tab indicating one alert. And if I chase that badge down to code scanning alerts, I can see that Stackhawk found results that meter exceed my failure threshold, which was again set to high. So there's a link in here. I can drop into my scan results, which are right here. And I can see that sure enough, I've got three high severity alerts now, if I go and triage these alerts, then they'll go into a triaged state and they'll no longer count against me as high severity alerts. So I'm gonna go ahead and triage these. And I'm just gonna say risk accepted for now. But if this was a normal, if you were working on a team, you would definitely want to do our integration with JIRA so that you could assign these tickets to developers and track these issues to resolution. So now, with all of my risks accepted, I have no new high severity alerts, and I can go rerun that action. And this time when the scan completes, um, no alerts should exceed, meet or exceed my failure threshold, and so this security badge should clear and we should be back to normal. And now that it's complete, if I reload this page, we should see that the security badge is gone. If I click into code scanning alerts, we have no current alerts. And if I pop over to Stackhawk, our latest scan is run, and you can see we've got no high alerts, only three high triaged alerts. So that's our new GitHub code scanning integration. It's a great new way to get up and running quickly with Stackhawk dynamic application security testing. 